evening, 6.30 news, Roger Pierce, Eric's brother. <laughs> the return journey of the Woman's Weekly World Discovery Tour was marred today by the death of Australian tourist Mrs. Effie Cunningham. Mrs. Cunningham, 87, was accidentally drowned when she fell overboard between duty-free Suva and beautiful Honiara. <laughs> An eyewitness said Effie was a strong swimmer that sank like a stone due to the weight of 27 watches <laughs> strapped to her arms and legs <laughs> and a reluctance to let go of a 200-pound string bag containing duty-free transistors. <laughs> 213 Japanese tourists aboard the liner have handed photographs of the incident to the police. Yeah. Okay, mate. <laughs> we cross now live to an area of bushland where police believe they have cornered a dreaded cricket yobbo who escaped earlier from the MCG. Well, as you can see, the police have apparently surrounded the dreaded cricket jobbo. And with me now to bring us up to date is Sergeant Arthur Maloney. Sergeant. Uh, good evening, members of the public. We first became aware that a yobbo had escaped from the MCG <laughs> when a member of the public telephoned the station alleging that a strange creature was running through the shopping centre, hurling empty cans and yelling slogans such as, get a bag and have a go a mug. <laughs> we gave this information to our forensic department who drew this identikit picture, which we immediately identified as the dreaded cricket yobbo, or as we in the department term it, cricketus interrupt us. But this one is particularly dangerous and is armed with a full esky. Okay, open fire! Good evening and welcome to Channel 9's special news edition featuring news for the hard of hearing and translated news for new Australians. Here are the headlines. <laughs> A flare-up in the Middle East as Israeli and Egyptian soldiers open fire. A flare-up in the Middle East as Israeli and Egyptian soldiers open fire! <laughs> That's a mean. Looks like there's going to be another one to punch up between the Dijippos and the D4B2. <laughs> Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser has promised tax relief for wage earners in the coming budget. Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser has promised tax relief for wage earners in the coming budget. Looks like the big buffets in the can mirror <laughs> is the telling bullshizer again. The Bureau of Meteorology satellite weather pictures show an intensive low pressure system moving towards the coast. The Bureau of Meteorology satellite weather pictures show an intensive low pressure system moving towards the coast. <laughs> Lesser mean viewers, tomorrow she's going to rain like a buggery. Good evening. Hope you had a nice day. Let's have a look at our chart and see how things went. Quite a mixed bag, as you can see today. Caused mostly by this coal front up here in the Gulf. <laughs> moving down through the Kimberleys, <laughs> across the Great Divide, and over to the coast. Also affecting our chart was this thigh pressure, <laughs> just below Tasmania. 
which is, should move north tomorrow and settle somewhere about here over surface parallax. <laughs> oh, the temperature today was pretty widespread, topped with a maximum of 37 up here at Mount Pleasant. <laughs> I'm going all the way down to a low of 14 down here at Perisher Valley. <laughs> oh, incidentally, there was a little uh, drizzle reported earlier up here, just below the bite. <laughs> That's expected to clear up soon. All right, so much for today's lovely weather. Let's have a look now and see what tomorrow has in store for us. <laughs> Doesn't look very promising, does it? <laughs> all in all, a pretty daggy day tomorrow. <laughs>
Yeah, when he burglar. That's right. Oh, boy. Burglar. <laughs> front page of TV week. I see it now. Biggest star robbed at home. This be the it's biggest thing since... But Philip Brady got a bit with a one in front of web spider. Oh, <laughs> you want the money, boy? I'll give you money. I've got plenty of money. I'm a big star on the Tel Aviv, see? Successful, famous, see the pictures? I've got plenty of money. Some money here, some money. Oh, maybe TV time, TV week, the truth. Here you go, look. Want money, boy? Hey, there's for you 20 cents. Okay, what's it, folks? <laughs> Gone. Oh, <laughs> coming out the one year real. How I do that, eh? You like that? Hey? 20 cents, is that it? No, I've got another one I do with a dollar. Um, Oh, you got a one in dollar? Just forget it, will you? Go back to bed and pretend it never hey, this happened. Is, hey, want to see me make it the more to do to disappear? What's this one? A beauty. Oh. Hey, what, hey, hang on a minute. Want, want to autograph a picture for the kids? <laughs> I can explain everything. Uh, she told me she wasn't married anyway. We were just testing the mattress out. Look, <laughs> <laughs> husband. Just give us some money, will you? A burglar. Oh, that's a relief. Oh, listen, you're a bit stiff, mate. I've done all my doubt the dogs last night. Hang on, hang on a minute. I'm going to leave the house empty handed. Cheryl might have something here. <laughs> Not now, Harry. <laughs> that's all she's got, mate. She's, I'm sorry about this. Embarrassing with a burglar coming and nothing in the head. Hey, listen, why don't you whip in the next door? There's a widow lady who's in there. She's got a quid. You know, no trouble here. It's only here and a young son. Young fella, 11 years of age. Almost 12. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Oh! 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 Money. I'm a burglar. Bert, this is a burglar. Burglar, this is Bert. Hi, Bert. Welcome to the wheel. Tonight on Don's Wheel, you could win Don's colour TV set. Or you could win Don's refrigerator. Or Don's clothes. If you have any seven feet relatives. <laughs> Hi, burglar. What number do you want to start on? Uh, seven. Number seven. Seven. <laughs> number seven. Good luck. Bad luck. But
but you have won a pair of Don's trousers. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bert. You were terrible tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Don. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what I came for. Huh? That's not what I came for. Oh. Welcome to Top Pro Golf. Introducing some of the greatest names in golfing history. Famous names such as Niklas, Crampton, and Hogan. See where he's ended up. Mm, Mashed potatoes a bit soft. Uh, better give us a wedge. <laughs> oh, straight onto the road. In contrast, Nicholas looks eminently relaxed. Back with Hogan trying to avoid the penalty. <laughs> How on earth are you going to get around this one? Well played. <laughs> Almost a birdie. <laughs> and neatly avoiding the water hazard. Notice the extraordinary balance of this chap. <laughs> Bad luck for them both. Niklas thought he had it. Another difficult lie. <laughs> oh, that'll be six for Niklas, and let's hear how Hogan's fared. How'd I get it? Uh, one the clubhouse, two onto the combi, three into the lake, four the tree. Five off the dead golfer, and uh, well, six the hole. Oh, pretty good. Pretty. What's it on this next hole, though? It's a lot trickier than this one was. Excuse me, Doctor. Um, <laughs> Mr. Woods to have his eyes tested. Oh, Mr. Woods, is it? Oh, come, come right in. Sit down. Have a chair. I'll be with you in just a moment. Oh. Thanks very much indeed, Doctor. Uh, will that be all, Doctor? Uh, thank you, Nurse. <laughs> what seems to be the, uh, the problem, Mr. Woods? Can we help well, you? Well, I... I, uh, I just came to have one of the, uh, Free eye tests that you uh, advertised. Ah, the free test. I've been having trouble with the eyes. Have you been seeing things, having illusions or anything like that? Well, uh, not, not until I came in here. Well, you, you're probably going to think I'm crazy, Doctor, but I mean, when I came in here, the uh, nurse and... Well, I could have sworn that you had blonde hair. Uh, I have, Mr. Woods. Oh, <laughs> oh Doctor, I'm, I'm worse than I thought. Just relax, Mr. Woods, and leave it to me. Just... Sit there quietly, put this over your right eye. And we'll see what the problem is. Now give us a look here at the left eye. Just look at me. Mm, pretty normal. Now cover this left eye and we'll have a look at the right eye. <laughs> oh, 
No. <laughs> Serious, eh, Doc? I'm afraid you're going to need glasses, Mr. Glasses? Woods. Well, I don't oh. normally like to prescribe them, but uh, in your case, it might be necessary. Just uh, have a look over here at the eye chart and read the bottom line, will you? <laughs> um, a. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, B. B. No, it's just no. as I suspected. Just, Sorry, just doctor. relax, Mr. Woods. It's perfectly all right. Put these on. I think these glasses should do the trick. Just. Uh... <laughs> Amazing. FWQP. <laughs> good, good, yes. That's what you needed. Well, 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 I have to wear them all the time, Doctor. Only if you want to see. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what the drama is. I mean, they look spectacular on you. Let me assure you, those $200 frames. $200? Oh, well, it's, I mean, it's worth it when you see how much younger they make you look. Oh. I, I'm, I'm amazed. I've never seen anyone look younger with glasses on. Look, don't take my word for it. Go and look in the mirror over there. Oh. Oh. You'll be a stout. I'll have a look. <laughs> well, I, I must admit they do look pretty good. Yes, and I'm sure you'll have no further trouble now. If you'd just like to see the nurse on your way out and pay your account, $265. $265? I'll oh, we'll throw in a case with the glasses. Mm -hmm. You'll have no further trouble, I assure you. Well, look, I, I can't thank you enough, Doctor. I mean, I had no idea that my eyes were so bad. Oh, thank goodness there's uh, nothing wrong with the rest of me, eh? <laughs> well, you can't be too careful. I had a young man in here the other day, and he... I, I, I beg your pardon? Uh, doctor, I, I can't hear you. I, the nurse, I, I can't hear the doctor. Oh, no, I can't hear the nurse. I can't hear my ears, doctor. There's something wrong with them. I can't... <laughs> I'll just leave them there, if you like. Mm -hmm. You'll help yourself. Mm -hmm. Into the straight, Spanish Waltz, the leader, Sunshine Life down the other side. And Spanish Waltz has won the money. Ah, by mongrel. Beat by half head. Yeah. Oh, isn't this exciting, Hoagie? I've never been to an art exhibition before. Well, that's one of the many bonuses of knocking around with a joker like me, Rosie. You pick up a bit of culture along the way. Yeah. <laughs> you like an hors d'oeuvre, sir? No, oh, I don't think so, mate. I'll have a bit of the tucker, though. <laughs> Oh, not for me. Too. I won't have any. I've got to watch my figure. You might as well, Rosie. Everyone else does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Hagi. David. Sir, <laughs> 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 oh, madam, like a drink. Oh, thanks very much, John. Oh, good on you. <laughs> oh, uh, hang on. I'll just put this down. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh, could I have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, so as we may better evaluate our new works, let us first refresh our memories as to the works of the established masters. Here we have a miniature replica of the masterpiece by Jackson Pollock, Blue Poles, which was done, of course, during his Blue Period. Oh, poor thing. What was he depressed about? <laughs> no, 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 Rosie, not that sort of blue. You see, um, your artists, they work in garrets. You know, it's up in the attic, and it gets pretty cold up there, and they mean he was blue with the cold. <laughs> As you are aware, the original was recently purchased for the National Gallery by Mr. Whitlam for $1.2 million. Oh, $1.2 million for a painter's drop sheet, eh? They're <laughs> <laughs> in a frame. Oh. Hey, they saw a goth coming, didn't uh, they? Oh. This, <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, is Whistler's mother, the original of which last changed hands for $5 million. Gee, just for the mother? Imagine what a picture the whole family had cost. 
And, uh, and right now, the enigmatic smile of the Mona Lisa. The question which has puzzled millions. Why was she smiling? Hi, Heidi, look. She smiles exactly like the girl does in the Playtex ad. <laughs> Doesn't she? Yeah, you're right, Rose. Yeah. yeah, maybe she's smiling because she's comfortable in a cross your art bra. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> oh, got that on Donovan's butcher shop calendar this year. <laughs> yeah, only because this is better. Better? Oh, yeah, he's got his framed in crumb cutlets. <laughs> <laughs> and in her hand there, she's got a leg of pork. <laughs> oh, he's a genius, Donovan, you know. Oh, yeah, oh he yeah, never boy. misses a trick. He's got a caption down the bottom. She's smiling. Well, she got in for a chop at Donovan's. Put a cork on, Rose. And now the greatest Italian painter of all time. Tony well, Brazzini. Huh? Tony Brazzini. Two bedrooms and a bathroom. Before smoke, go without a roller. <laughs> The reproduction of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo. The work took him seven years. There you are. Thank you, Not a patch on Tony, eh? <laughs> and was commissioned by the infamous hunchback Pope, who was Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. That's why they did it on the ceiling. What? <laughs> eh? What's why think? Michelangelo did it on the ceiling? Of course, the Pope was hunchback. What do you mean? Oh, well, you see, he used to get around like this. And he thought, if he get him to paint it on the ceiling, every day when he'd come in to have a look at it, He'd have to bend up like that. And he figured six or seven years of doing that, he'd get rid of the hunch in his back. Oh, <laughs> oh you know, make the pipe. You just know everything about art, Hoagie. Well, just about, Rose. <laughs> Perhaps then you might care to enlighten us on the uh, Moulin Rouge work of Toulouse-Lautrec. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. Go on. Will I? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the picture. <clears throat> oh, certainly. Uh, pay attention, uh, fellow art lovers. Now, this here is what you call your Moulin Rouge. Although I doubt very much if that was done by Toulouse Lautrec himself. Oh, no, no. Well, to start with, you see, he was only three foot ten high, and I don't think he could reach that eye. Oh. <laughs> and actually, you know, that was why. Because he was three foot ten, he used to knock around the pubs in Paris and France. That was why he cut his ear off, see? Oh, uh, I excuse me, but I, I think that was Van Gogh. You're right. No, no, Gogh bought the blue poles, love. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're talking about the Toulouse Law Trek bloke now. Now, you see, he used to walk through the pubs with his little hat on, three foot ten, about that high. And of course, he was such a convenient height, all the drunks and the winos, you'd know about them, would sort of hash their fags on his head, see, on his hat. So he got a bit cut off about it, went home and sliced his ear off. And that made his hat tilt sideways on his head, you see. So when he walked through the pub, all the ashes just rolled off onto the floor. <laughs> Nonsense. And poor Mr. Latrick, you know, he was only that high. Yeah, that's right. I guess you could say it was a bum whirl for Toulouse Latrick. <laughs> bum whirl? Yeah. Oh, yeah! <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry, I know you want me to stay, but that's all I've got time for. Uh, me and Rosie are going to the pictures. Bit of modern art. See you all later. What do you want to go and see, Rose? Oh, I don't know, Haggy. Uh, maybe, uh, you're the case of the smiling stiffs. <laughs> <laughs>
Excuse me, sir, but, but you have to be quiet. Oh, be go away, son. It'll be just fine, miss, if I stand on them till I can reach the bicky jar. Right. What's the problem? It's him, officer. He's a, a, a homicidal maniac. Him? He's only a kid. What have you been up to, son? Shh. Don't you shush me, lad. I'm a policeman. <laughs> yes, but you're a very noisy policeman. Right on, me boy. Hmm. We're going to play policeman now. He'll be Kojak. <laughs> Hello, miss. See you again. Hello there. This man is completely bald. Incredible as it may seem, he is actually wearing a completely undetectable Mr. Virile hairpiece. <laughs> what makes the Mr. Virile the best hairpiece on the market? Simply this. Once it's fixed into place with Araldite <laughs> and our exclusive, unique half-inch staples, it's fixed for life. <coughs> Watch this satisfied customer as he goes through the rigors of everyday life with newfound confidence and panache. Thanks to his Mr. Vera. can wear cashew and all be a little different. Like Arts Frieda Fertlinger, totally different. <laughs> St Kilda's Maggie Wallbanger, a personality. 
Kutamundra's Marlene Groper. <laughs> they all wear cachet, all a little different. Cachet by Matt Belly. Most housewives say that all washing powders are the same, but you use Amo, why? They're not all the same. Are you sure? I'm positive. Amo washes whiter. My clothes really sparkle. It's not just your imagination. <laughs> no, I really mean it. Then Amo is brighter. <laughs> yes, it really is. Really and truly? It is really and truly. You're not lying, are you? No, no. Amo really is brighter? Yes, it really is. And you don't use anything else? <laughs> What do you use? What do you use? I use rinse <laughs> mm, I made this. Could you? I made this. Could you? I made this. Could you? <laughs> and I made this. Could you? I see you're encouraging those bloody trees to grow again, mate. If you don't get those cut back, I'm going to have the council in here to remove the bloody things. If I have your kid coming in... <laughs> having trouble with nosy neighbours and finding it hard to get rid of them using old-fashioned sprays? You're in trouble. Then you need neighbour guard. Just one simple application of neighbour guard along neighbour affected areas and get rid of those unwanted pests forever. <laughs> on the back patio. <laughs> neighbor guard used in conjunction ah! with neighbor eater <laughs> ensures you of neighbor free backyards. <laughs> Keep irritating pests at bay with Neighbour Guard and Neighbour Eater. And have a good weekend.